Hi, thanks for joining us for Devotionables, Brief Devotions for Busy People. My name is Gabriel. Thank you for joining us. Today we look at John 3.16, the most famous verse in the entire Bible. And sometimes it's easy to kind of put this verse to the side because, well, that's, that's like a little Sunday school verse. That's for little children. But this is a verse for everyone. This is a verse that we desperately need to hear and be reminded of quite frequently. So I just want to walk through it with you today and hopefully encourage you, if you are a fellow believer, in your faith. And if you've never put your faith in Jesus, this is a verse I want you to think about so that you might hear how you can have life. The Apostle John writes this in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. What wonderful words. Amazing words. You know, John has been exiled on Patmos. It's been a, a number of years he now is writing after decades of thinking about the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. And now he puts his thoughts on paper, on a scroll, and he does so that you and I, it might elicit faith in our hearts. And we might have faith in Jesus, the Son of God, and that by believing in Him, we may have life in His name. So this, at the center of His gospel is the Lord Jesus Christ. And, he's, and what Jesus is doing and has done for us. He starts here in John 3. He says, For God. God is the creator and the ruler of everything. He is the one who is in charge of the game. He makes the rules of the game. He cares for His creation. And His creation, has, as far as human beings, man and women, men and women, we have rejected His rule over us. In doing so, we have ushered in death. The Bible calls this sin, right? The first sin was with Adam and Eve, but we all have sinned and fall short of His glory. We are sinners by birth, sinners by choice. And so when, when John gets here and says, For God so loved the world, that's what he's talking about. The world is those who are in op- stand in opposition to God, that have enmity with God. We are His enemies, and we are under His wrath. And it says that God loved us. You know, for most of us, if we were in charge, we would just be done with us. Knock us out. Get, get out of here. Judgment and only judgment. But God is the God of grace and truth. And here he bestows grace on all who will look to his son in faith. And so he loves the world. He loves those in opposition to him. And then John says, and this is the way, this is the kind of love that God has. Paul says something similar in Romans. He says, but God demonstrates his love love for us. And while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It's the same thought here. John expressing it a little more differently. The God loved the world in this way, that He gave His only Son. Jesus is the Son of God. That's what John is trying to bring out. That's what, as these stories and these declarations, John shares seven signs and seven I am declarations, statements from Jesus, all pointing to His identity as the Son of God. And so God has sent His Son. Over and over in John, we read that Jesus said, I have been sent from the Father. He was sent for a mission. Luke said he came to seek and to save the lost. And here he is given, right? He says that no one takes my life, but I lay it down. So the way that that God gives his son is as a a sacrifice, an atoning sacrifice. You think about John 1 29, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So God loves his world, uh, the world in this way, that he gives his one and only son. Why? What's the effect? That whoever would believe in him, whether you're Nicodemus, and the story of Nicodemus happens right above this. In 1 through 15, Nicodemus is the teacher of Israel, well educated in the scriptures, and yet his heart remained darkened in sin, and he needed to be born from above. He needed the Lord to save him. It's also for the lady in John chapter 4, the Samaritan lady, the lady at the well. It's for you and it's for me. who We may not know the scriptures like Nicodemus did, but the reality is that Nicodemus was a sinner. This lady in Samaria was a sinner. I 
am a sinner. You are a sinner. And we all need the saving grace of God. And he sends Jesus to do something about our sin. That he lived a perfect life. He died the death that we deserve to die. He was raised on the third day. And he lives forevermore. And so by putting our trust in him, that whoever would believe in him would have eternal life and not perish. Believe. That's why John wrote this gospel. Circle that word 98 times. He uses the verb to believe. Believe. What does it mean to believe? It means to put your trust in. You know, I'm sitting. You can't see it. You can probably tell, though. I'm sitting on a stool right now. I put my trust that this stool would, up, would hold me up when I sat down. I could sit here or stand right beside and say, I believe that that stool can hold it up. But until I actually actively sit down and my faith works, so to speak, that I, I show that I have faith in this stool, do I really believe? And that's in a sense, what are you believing in? Only Jesus can save you. And so you put your trust in Jesus. Say, I think he can. And then you put your trust in him that Jesus alone can save. And the result is that you will not perish, that you will not die. The thing is, is even though you live now, the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. That you will one day depart from this world. And that's, that's physical death. But there's also spiritual death. And you may be spiritually dead now, but Jesus offers you life. He says, all who come to me, I will never cast out. If you want eternal life, you look to Jesus. Jesus who invites you to have life today by believing in him. For all who believe in his name are given life. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whoever would believe in Him shall not perish but have eternal life.